Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that is not related to computer science but which really caught my fancy lately. The title of this paper is A Brief History of Risk which I thought was a nice play on the title of the famous book A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. And what this looks at is the question of how we as a society have thought about and written about risk over a fairly long period of time. If you look at the discourse today, everything always seems to be about risk, about quantifying risk, about dealing with risk, about mitigating risk, and so on. And this happens both at the individual as well as the societal level. Now we can all opine about why that is, and of course there has been a lot of writing on that topic, but what caught my interest in this paper is that they try to quantify how the concept of risk appears in our discourse over a long period of time by looking at actual data from a large corpus of text. The authors seem to be motivated by this central almost paradoxical observation that if you look at modern society with all its services and all its infrastructure, most individuals seem to be sheltered from large risks. If you look at the data, things like violent conflict, poverty, starvation have all decreased drastically while life expectancy has doubled. You should go check out the late Hans Rosling's talks on YouTube where he shows this data across a long period of time across many countries to show the progress that humanity has made in the last hundred or so years. And yet, now more than ever, we seem to be incessantly obsessed with risk. So why is that? Now the authors acknowledge that the word risk has a wide variety of meanings. If you look at the domain of insurance, Risk is associated with the probability of something bad happening. On the other hand, if you look at finance, economics, stock markets, and things like that, risk means the variance in returns of some sort of an asset. So a stock that fluctuates a lot is considered to be more risky than a stock that is relatively stable. And these multiple meanings are perfectly fine because they're looking at these corpora of texts that cover a long period of time. And so all these meanings are just naturally incorporated in the usage of this word over time. They're not biasing towards one meaning of risk at the expense of another. Let's talk about the corpora that they use. The first one they use is the Google Books Ngram Corpus. And this consists of n-grams, which are collections of n-words, and in this case, n ranges from 1 to 5. This is a very broad corpus. It has over 8 million books published from 1600 to 2008, which accounts for 6% of all books ever published. So this is a really broad corpus that covers a long period of time. While the Google Books corpus is intended to give a broad telescopic view of the usage of this word, the second corpus they use, which is the New York Times corpus, contains all articles published in the New York Times from 1987 to 2007. This corpus is meant to provide a more microscopic view because, of course, it skews to a much more modern time era. And finally, the third corpus they look at is the Corpus of Historical American English, or COHA, which, as they say, contains 400 million words written from the 1810s to 2000. This should serve as some sort of a verification against the Google Books Ngram corpus. Okay, so let's look at some of the results. This is a graph of the frequency of the word risk along with the frequency of related words like fear, danger, and hazard over time. And this red line is the frequency of the word risk. You can see that around 1960 or 1970, it starts sticking sharply upwards. And the other words like fear, danger, or hazard don't have a similar uptick. Just for reference, they also charted the frequency in Italian, Spanish, and French, 
and they all have similar trends. So yes, as the graphs showed us, the frequency of the word risk has increased dramatically since around 1970, with about a four-fold increase since the 1950s. And this is a trend that holds in other Western languages as well. And interestingly, you see similar words like danger, fear, and hazard not showing a similar uptick in frequency. And what this shows is how the idea of risk has become very central to our current discourse. The other interesting thing the authors found was they calculated the other words that co-occurred with risk. And this was over the last 200 years. And this showed that the sentiment associated with the word risk has become very negative over time. As they say, roughly monotonically declining from 1800 to 2000. If you compare this with other similar words like danger, fear, and hazard, their association with all these other negative words has stayed roughly constant over the same time period. So in addition to becoming more prevalent, the meaning of risk has also turned more negative over this time period. The somewhat paradoxical thing about risk taking on darker shades of meaning is that traditionally, risk was considered to be a bad thing because it was unknowable. It was not quantified very well. Whereas in modern times, most risks have been quantified to a large degree. The other surprising thing that the authors note is that this change seems to be monotonic, which is to say that there's a sharp uptick and it keeps going up. It's not like a spike that went up for a period of time and then subsided. They surmise that some of this may be because as information is shared among people, there is a bias for people to share more negative aspects of that information or the more negative aspects of the risk associated with that information. So that was a quick look at a paper that tries to quantify how we as a society use the word risk in our discourse. It has definitely gone up in frequency by fourfold in fact and taken on much darker meanings. But that, according to the authors, is also kind of the silver lining in that if we call something a risk, it changes our stance towards it. And that, in turn, affects how we start looking at mitigating those risks. If you're interested in this topic, I'd really encourage you to not just go off my quick summary over here and go look at the paper yourself. It's a very interesting paper, and there's some aspects that I didn't want to go into in too much detail in this short summary. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.